some coin all around. The different arts of this country. And asking folks, do you remember where you were when your community was traumatized and terrorized on the last four years of the previous Do you remember when you were traumatized and terrorized by Donald Trump as president in this country? Detroit, do you remember? Yeah, do you remember? So, let me get this straight. You lose a free and fair election in 2020. And you say the election was rigged and stolen. But in 2016, when you narrowly won the election, oh, it was legitimate. So you all, in order to understand what I'm going to say next, you have to understand this. The same voting machines that we used in 2016 were utilized again in 2020. Same type of technology. And so if the machines were, you know, if they were all right in 2016 when he got the outcome that he favored, what happened to those machines four years later when he got the outcome he didn't favor? No. We saw the president become the biggest sore loser and reap the biggest havoc he ever reaped in this country. Yeah, that's what we saw. Now before they attacked the nation's capital on January 6, 2021, they showed up and attacked Detroit, Michigan too. Physically, his supporters showed up and attacked the voting location, pounding on the doors, trying to break out the windows, yelling racial epithets. They attacked Detroit over the airways. Conspiracy theorists and propagandists and liars like Lou Dobbs made wild outlandish claims that he knew he couldn't prove brought on guests onto his show that created out of thin air conspiracy theories about Detroit and election fraud. Yeah. And then we had the president from the White House disseminating lies and conspiracy theories about Detroit. We had billionaire citizens in this country draft up executive orders to have the United States military seize voting equipment in Detroit yeah. and just, you know, delete the transmission of how people voted in Wayne County. Yeah. Complete disenfranchisement. Complete wanting to utilize the United States military to that end, to disenfranchise black Americans. Yeah, complete disenfranchisement. The CEO of MyPillow, Mike Lindell, the CEO at that time of over
Overstock.com, Patrick Barnes, and the former national security, you know, they met in the White House, and they concocted a scheme to try to get the president to utilize the military to seize voting equipment, the voting machines in Detroit, and to delete and remove the voting record of how people have voted in the 2020 election. Yeah. They simply were not going to count your votes in Detroit. Yeah. Simple as that. They just were going to count everywhere else and act as though Detroit, the most populous city in Michigan, they were just going to say, you don't exist. We don't like the choice you made as American citizens, so your choice doesn't count. You don't get to participate in your democracy if you don't choose the dictatorship that we want. Yeah. This is the scheme he concocted. Yeah. Yeah. And in order to, you know, try to convince the citizenry, that's where Lou Dobbs and folks like Maria Bartiromo and, you know, all the Fox News hosts, this where they came in. They had to tell lies about the companies that manufacture those machines. Dominion and Smartmatic. They had to concoct way out crazy conspiracy theories like dictators in Venezuela tampered with the machines and rigged them. Yeah. They had to go to great lengths to try to convince the American citizenry to do one thing and one thing only. Disenfranchise Motown. Disenfranchise Black Americans. Yeah, on the electoral process. It wasn't just Detroit, it was Philadelphia, it was Atlanta, it was Las Vegas, it was Santa Cruz and Albuquerque, New Mexico. But Detroit was crucial. Michigan was crucial. He had won it in 2016 narrowly on the same machines. He lost it narrowly in 2020. Yeah. You know, recently I was thinking, what's really going to be the most important issue in 2024? Opinion polls say the economy. It's wiffle waffle, you know, it's not great. Some polls say health care. We know our health care system needs upgrading to say the least. Some folks say education. Well, we're not perfect in that area either. Some people say immigration. They've been tackling immigration for as long as they've been tackling health care. That's to say forever. And while all of those policies and issues are of central paramount, and others, you know, paying debts that we owe our fellow citizens in terms of reparations, all of these things are central and paramount, but you all, for me personally, they're not the biggest issues in 2024. The 
thing I'll be casting my vote primarily concerning is tone and tenor of a leader. That sets the pace for everything else. It's something that's really until Donald Trump came down that golden escalator, it was something really underrated may not even have thought about it. Tone and tenor of a leader, really? Well, we never had anybody that was caught on Access Hollywood tape saying that you could sexually assault women if you have a lot of money. Never heard somebody speak like that. Yeah. We had never heard folks speak about our neighbors in the South. Classify them as all rapists, murderers, and thieves. No, we had never heard that before. We had never heard people say that if you come from a country just because it's a different operating system where there's a different religion dominant, that there should be a ban on your travel coming in and outside the country just because of, you know, it being Muslim. We never heard anybody say that before. Yeah. And that tone, that tenor, set the pace for how people who, that would come to support Donald Trump would ultimately behave towards their fellow citizens in a cruel, inhumane, and deadly way in many, 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 too many cases to even mention or name at this point. Yeah. We saw how he sicked the mob on Detroit. Yeah. Terrorized the people of Detroit. They said they had never seen anything like this. One woman who was an election worker, she said, I've worked several elections off year presidential election, she said, I have never experienced people whilst votes are being tabulated, told on the president's social media account that people are inside stealing an election and to go and stop them. She said she had never experienced that before in her life. People were targeted for simply doing their job. And they weren't targeted by just anybody. They were targeted by the president and the president's lawyer. Yeah. This targeting came out of the White House. And now get this. Detroit. All the crimes that, you know, the former president committed whilst he was on the job. He wants to go to the Supreme Court and say that, you know, I should be allowed to do all of those things because I have immunity. The office of the presidency gives me complete and utter immunity to commit crimes. That's literally the argument he's making right now. And you know, that's for the court to make a determination. You know, I think it's a load of hogwash. Really? The Supreme Court is going to say that the president can declare and order a war against his own nation whilst he's sitting in office? Really? We shall await their decision, but you know, that's really in essence what he said. I can declare war on the citizenry and the republic so long as I'm officially considered to be the president. Huh. Yeah, he declared war on Detroit. Yeah. He said, all of you are thieves. You stole things. Yeah. You rained on his parade. You stopped him from being reelected. Don't you know you're not supposed to make the dictator mad? Upset? No, you can't do that. So now if he's elected again, he wants to, you know, he wants to be the retribution for all the folks that came and terrorized you in 2020. Yeah. He wants to be their retribution. 
Stop the steal. How? When Mike Lindell and Patrick Barnes, yeah, when they were the ones who concocted the scheme to steal. John Eastman, these are the folks that concocted the scheme, the scheme to steal. They were the ones willfully okay with stealing an election. When they didn't get the outcome they wanted, they immediately turned to, you know, theories about how the outcome can be undone. Theories that range from creating fake electors in your state. You know, once a state votes and a certain candidate wins that state, they send electors on January 6th. They just created their own slate of fake electors. And they sent their names instead of the real names and wanted the vice president to open those up the envelopes and read fake elector names as though they were the legitimate names. They forged federal documents for the purported purposes of stealing a federal election in 2020. Yeah. In essence, they committed crimes. Yeah. They were the ones trying to steal your vote in Michigan. Yeah. yeah. That's what they were trying to do. Steal it right from under your nose. Now, you say that the citizens show up. Absolutely. From counties to city board meetings, by the thousands, Detroit residents were saying, you better keep and count our vote. You cannot act as though Wayne County and Detroit doesn't exist in this state simply because you don't like who we are and how we choose our folks to be leaders. Yeah, you can't do that. And the tone and tenor at those meetings were tense. You had the president's lawyer at the time, Rudy Giuliani, go after two black women, a mother and a daughter. They released, think about this, Detroit, they released a edited video clip that was grainy, showing two people moving boxes of ballots around. And they said, aha, because this looks, you know, a certain way, we can create a narrative that can purport to show these women stealing. Yeah. And that's what they did. They created an alternative narrative of something that wasn't the reality of the situation. They sent a lynch mob after those two women. And they sent a lynch mob after residents in Detroit because they didn't vote for Donald Trump. Yeah. Yeah, it was the most racist thing in contemporary American society that I think many of us have ever seen before. Yeah. And had you not really had brave, really strong bulwarks of democracy in their positions. You know, if you had a head, somebody that was, you know, timid or prone to being intimidated, the scheme could have probably worked. I mean, I don't think if you didn't have Jocelyn Benson, if you didn't have Dana Nissel, if you didn't have Gretchen Whitmer, if you didn't have those strong women who stood up and made certain that every lawful American citizen who cast in a ballot in 2020, that their vote was counted, if you didn't have that, 
then the President of the United States could have in theory steamrolled over the residents of Detroit. And just, you know, not allow their voices to count in this democracy. Something that for much of our country's history was the case. You know, people just quote Martin Luther King, but don't remember that Martin Luther King was actually fighting for black Americans to have voting rights in this country. Yeah. Up until 1965, that wasn't the case. And Donald Trump in 2020 was trying to make it not the case again. Yeah. When he said make America great again, he wanted to take voting rights away from black people again. That's what I heard. That's what the people in Detroit experienced in 2020. Yeah, there were so many Detroit residents on Zoom calls, it, was, it wasn't even funny. The screen was just, you could see tiny little dots. It was hundreds of thousands of people who were saying, you better not do this to us. You better stand firm and steadfast for our right to participation in this country we bled and died for. Yeah. That's what Detroit residents were saying. But you know, money was behind this effort, big money. Mike Lindell is a billionaire. Patrick Barnes is a billionaire. And those two men wanted to take the rights of voters to have their voices heard in the 2020 presidential election. They wanted to take their rights away in Detroit. Both of them did. Yeah. Yeah. And if we think that they wouldn't try this again, then you don't know the charade of characters they've got over there. They really don't know. Yeah, they're going to try it again. This time they're going to try to perfect it, tinker around. Oh, there'll be some new thing. Thousands of other new conspiracy theories. Remember, Detroit, they don't believe in democratic norms and values. They don't believe you should have a right to participate and have a voice in this democracy. They don't like you, and they don't like your right that you have to vote. Yeah. And at every turn, they make sure that they demonstrate and display that towards you. Yeah, yeah that's when Detroit was terrorized by Donald Trump. That was right around January 6th. That was probably December of 2020. Yeah, that was probably December of 2020. Because early on, December, around the 6th or 7th, is when they put up that grainy video footage of those two women in Fullerton County. Yeah. And a lot of that was what people who, you know, were chomping at the bits to get to January 6th. They were all on Parler, all on Twitter, all on Gab. They were all saying, boy, I can't wait to get to the Capitol. In the daytime, they were planning to impede the peaceful transfer of power. At night, they were planning to lynch the residents of Washington, D.C. Yeah. Yeah. They were going to end democracy by day and, you know, implement slavery again at night. That was the plan on January 6th. That was the real, real plan. Yeah. You got to take a look at the metadata on par. You heard one. He said it's 1776 all over again. Yeah. 
You remember what the country was in 1776, right? You picked up a history book, right? You know who could and couldn't participate. You know who could and couldn't be considered to be a human being. You know what type of institutions we had in 1776. Yeah. They knew full well what they were doing. They knew full well. Yeah. In 2024, it's time to hold Trump accountable, and it's time to hold a, his most deranged, unhinged, and deeply unwell adherents accountable, too. I don't even consider them supporters anymore. Because they adhere to every edict of his dictatorship. Now, a supporter is someone who casts a ballot. And, you know, if they win, they're happy. If they lose, well, you know, tough luck. You get them next time. Or if you don't want to stick around, you make contingency plans to leave the country. When Hillary Clinton lost the election in 2016, there were people who were really sad and knew exactly what Donald Trump meant for this country. Yeah. They didn't all get together and decide they were going to impede the peaceful transfer of power. In fact, Hillary Clinton conceded that something Donald Trump to this day has still never done. To this very day, he still never conceded. To this very day, he's still lying on the city of Detroit. Yeah, he's still lying on you. He's still telling lies like the election, the process, it was stolen in Detroit. He's still lying. He's still targeting you. He's still traumatizing you. And he's still going to send his mob of goons to terrorize you. Rest assured, that's coming back in 2024 with a vengeance. And Detroit, you got to be ready to stand up to it. We've all got to be ready to take the stand and make the choice again. Yeah. We know what this is. Yeah. We know what it is. We've seen this kind of thing before. We really have. If people really, 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 really think back, they'll remember what it is. I've made up my mind and I've settled. Detroit, I'm going to be honest. I'm not worried about Trump. And I'm not worried about his psychotic, unhinged, and deeply unwell adherence. I'm not worried about it. They're gone. They're sicker than sick. We saw their sickness when they stormed your buildings in 2020. When they came to your city. Many of them didn't live in Detroit. They might have lived in Michigan, but they didn't live in Detroit. Yeah. Because some people will say, oh, well, they were Michigan residents. Yeah. What would it look like if I came into their community with thousands of people and while their votes were being counted, people were storming and trying to break into their buildings? Yeah, they wouldn't appreciate that, to say the least. And they probably have some armed police out there. Yeah. They might even, you know, start to shoot people. Yeah. So while, why they thought it would be appropriate to go into Detroit, a city they didn't live in, and terrorize residents who did, you know, it's the same thing we saw in Portland. Literally, it's the same thing. Those folks might live out on the West Coast, but they didn't live in Portland. They drove into Portland to terrorize residents who lived in that community. We saw this time and time again with Donald Trump and his adherents. That if they didn't get the outcome they wanted, they felt they could intimidate, bully, harass, and terrorize people. Yeah, that was a constant theme of his. 
And you know what? Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley, she's a girl. And I have some thoughts about her. I disagree on a lot of policy. But one thing she said very recently is accurate. It's really, really, truly accurate. They say wherever Donald Trump goes, chaos ensues. Think about it. Wherever he goes, have you noticed chaos ensues? Gets a rain in New York. First the rain, it gets a circus outside. People scrapping and punching and kicking and throwing each other to the ground. He turns his rage on Black Lives Matter. You get a fake, lying ass medic. 17 year old steals a gun that he shouldn't have had and runs to Kenosha and shoots and otherwise two people. Then he's two weeks later standing next to the President of the United States giving a thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like implicitly or explicitly, people that adhere to Donald Trump feel as though they can intimidate, commit violence, and harm people who don't. It's kind of like what we've been seeing from Jump Street. His first rally, there was a heckler. Some of his supporters punched the heckler. He called the next day to Fox and Friends. You all remember this. People were laughing about it. It was so funny. Political violence was so funny back then. Remember? Remember Detroit? Yeah. It got less and less funny. By the time it got to, you know, when they were pounding on your windows, it wasn't funny anymore. Yeah. So he called Fox and Friends and said, you know what, that dude that punched the other guy, I want to pay his legal fees. You remember that? He made a joke of it. Yeah. Tone and tenor. That's what it's about for me in 2024. And you got to be nuts and full of bullshit if you want to say that our current president and the former one have the same tone and tenor. You're not even operating in the same ballpark. No, it's not even close. President Biden, you know, he's run for president before he was. Went all the way back to the 80s. Late 80s, I think, he ran for president. Multiple attempts, never made it out of the primary. At no point in time, did our current president ever, ever claim that free and fair elections where he wasn't elected were rigged, stolen? At no point in time did our current president ever declare to his supporters that they have to fight like hell, that they'll never take their country back by showing weakness. No. He accepted the results of a free and fair election Time after time after time, win or lose. Yeah. So don't tell me that it's the same thing. And don't tell Detroit residents it's the same thing because it's not. Yeah. The tone and tenor that Donald Trump set created the rise in hate crimes that we see currently continuing. It started in 2019. The FBI said it was a 3,000% increase in hate crimes. We saw it time and time again. But it started all the way back in 2017 at Unite the Right. Remember they were trying to remove the statue of Robert E. Lee. 
when that wasn't why the skinheads and neo-Nazis and the Confederates showed up. That was part of the reason. But the real reason they said was they wanted to start an ethnic war, a civil war. Yeah, another civil war. You know, there are still people who are Confederates. We saw that on January 6, 2021. And they have something in common with their wannabe dictator, Donald Trump. They're sore losers, too. They lost the war to maintain the cruel and barbaric institution of the enslavement of human beings. They lost that war. But, you know, they're sore losers. And so they want to go for round two. You know, 2024 is here. I can't stress it enough. We're finally at a crossroads, an inflection point. You will see this very clearly in 2024. It's going to be intense, the stand and the choice we all have to make as citizens. It's going to be very, very intense. But we're going to all have to take the stand to join and make the choice. I can't make choices for anybody. Yeah. I can only talk about the choice I've already made and the stand I'm going to make against it. We show in Charlottesville folks saying that their fellow Jewish Americans will not replace them. And that they want blood in the soil. Yeah, that's what we saw. And our current president said he saw this too. And he said that's what spurred him out of retirement. You know, for anybody that really doesn't know President Biden, this man is not selfish. Not at all. Hillary Clinton ran a very strong campaign in 2016. Fuck what anybody in the press tells you. The country had elected the first black president. Think about that. The first. You really think that in 2008 we couldn't have had more than just one? Yeah. We had never, and to this day, we've still never elected a woman president. Think about that. In nearly 250 years, 2026, it'll be 250 years. We've never had a woman be president in this republic. You don't think there's any highly, highly overqualified women to be in charge of this republic? You really think that Hillary Clinton wasn't more superior to Donald Trump? Knowing what we know now, but even knowing what you knew then. Really? No. So, this notion that President Biden, you know, he shouldn't run or seek re-election. Anybody can just beat Trump, you know. I don't think people fully grasp the magnitude of what they're dealing with. President Biden. Boy, that sounds sweet. He's the only person that's ever beat Donald Trump. And Trump knows this. Nobody has ever beaten him besides Biden. And Biden will beat him again in 2024. I'm not worried about Trump and I'm not worried about his supporters. Detroit, we gotta worry about ourselves. 
we really, really got to worry about ourselves, because I mean that. You want to know how you lose a war? Complacency and apathy. That's really the only way you lose wars. Complacency and apathy. Especially a war like this. If we get complacent, you know, like, saying that, you know, it was a bad ordeal that we endured under the four-year reign of Donald Trump the first time, but we made it out on the other side. And it'll probably be bad again, but, you know, there's enough guardrails and institutions to withstand four years. Complacency like that, that kind of thinking, that's how you lose a war. And make no mistake, we're at war. When I saw that, when I saw that scumbag go into the Capitol building with a Confederate flag and say, this is an exercise of my free speech, I knew right then and there what it was, Detroit. Yeah. Right then and there. Apathy. I'm not going to vote. Cool. You know what I hear? I don't count. That's all I hear. That's it. When you say, I'm not going to vote, you just say, I don't count. Period. I'm not going to exercise my voice in the country I live in. Now, that's your choice you have in 2024. Make no mistake about it. You have that choice. But you saw all the folks that were terrorizing you outside those buildings in Detroit. Let me tell you something. No matter how many times they lie to themselves that the election was stolen, they're all going to get off their ass and they're going to vote in 2024. And they're not going to vote in your best interest, Detroit. Not at all. In fact, they're going to vote to be cruel and barbaric towards you. They want their pound of flesh. They want their retribution. And Donald has promised to be their retribution. And you know, as bitter and as vindictive as he's always been, you can take him at his word. Yeah, you can take him to the bank. And he definitely will be. He's chomping at the bits. Yeah. Apathy is not going to get us anything but the war to be lost. Yeah, that's what it'll get. So when I hear complacency and when I hear apathy, I hear that they don't really want to do what it takes to win the war, to finish the job. That's what I hear. Fair enough. But just know what that means. Please do. Please do fully understand what that means. Let me explain. Donald Trump has said he's going to pardon everyone. And I do mean everyone. Who did anything on January 6th. He's going to pardon them. Probably the first five minutes in office. He'll have all their names compiled. And he'll just pardon them. Fuck the pardon office. He's not going to go through that. No, he's pardoning them also. And you know where they're going to land right after they're out of prison? Right in his administration. Yeah. He's going to stack his administration with those type of folks. They're loyal. They showed the utmost loyalty to him. They attacked their own nation on his behalf. 
So they're going straight into the administration. They're going straight into the military. Straight into every law enforcement agency in this country. That's where they're going. Rittenhouse, yeah, that's the type. That's He's going straight into FBI. Maybe even the CIA. Yeah. Tiki Torch Boys. Oh, they're, they're going to be running all the institutions. All the NGOs, all the ambassadorships, yeah, that's where they're going. They have a real replacement theory. Have you read Project 2025? Yeah. That's the real replacement theory. You say, oh, the institutions will hold. No, he's going to get rid of all those people. Don't you know that's the deep state? Yeah, just like he did Comey, he's going to do all of them like that. And then he's going to install those type of folks. And you know what they're going to do after they're installed? They're going to open up internment camps. They're going to put people in ovens, gas chambers, firing squads, nooses and gallows. You saw it on the Capitol. You know what that was for. Yeah, that's what he's going to do. He's promised it. Yeah. There was nothing great about hate. Donald Trump made America hate again. Have you been outside? Have you looked at the folks? We can see who the haters are, right? You can see it. Yeah, he made them hateful. Bitter. Yeah. Some people say they were always like that. Yeah, but they weren't given license until he rode along. They were under a nice, big, gigantic boulder where they deserved to be. And he came along and removed the boulder. Emboldened them. Yeah. Detroit was going to have to take the stand against them. Period. It's going to come to that anyway. We can either prevent them from getting power or they can get power and we're going to be crucified. He's promised that. I take him at his word, especially knowing the history of this country. I most certainly take them at their word. Because it's not just him. It's folks like Stephen Miller. Yeah. It's all of them. Yeah. We saw what they did to us in Detroit. Lou Dobbs, Fox News. They had to pay $787 million defamation for what they did to Dominion. They put a target on the back of all the workers at Dominion. The CEO said nobody wanted to do business because the president has said their machines were faulty. Yeah. He made an entire news organization corrupt and rotten to the core. Yeah. That's what he did to Fox News. Some people say, oh, it wasn't great before that. I don't disagree, but once he was done with it, it was asinine and corrosive. Yeah. Wherever he goes, chaos ensues. You can expect it in 2024. Expect political violence. Expect his adherence to harass and bully people who don't support him. 
They didn't expect that. And you know who the usual suspects will be. The same people you saw in Charlottesville and on January 6th. We all know who they are. And we all can look at them and tell they're deeply unwell. There's nothing we can do. They're sick. There's no cure for it, no. No. We're going to have to defend ourselves, Detroit. We're going to have to defend ourselves from them. We're going to have to take defense against them. Period. This is not going to be easy. It's going to be extremely difficult. But it's of the utmost necessary. If we don't, you know, you know what the outcome is going to be. We all do. We got close on January 6, 2021. Yeah, we got real close. We got real, real, real close. You go and watch those January 6th Select Committee hearings, the Liz Cheney and Benny Thompson that they chaired and co-chaired. You go and watch that. And then make the choice to join. Choose to be against that. And we all know what it is. Yeah, it's time to take a stand against Trump. Yeah, it's time to fire him again. I will be on record saying the biggest mistake this country has ever made in contemporary times is thinking that Donald Trump was even remotely fit to be president. That's one of the biggest mistakes you ever made. And to this day, we're still dealing with the ramifications of that mistake. They say sometimes you can make a mistake twice. I don't think there will be a recovery the next time. This is it. We fired him once for a reason. We got him out. Under no circumstances, Detroit, do you hear me? Under no circumstances. Can that entity go anywhere near 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue again, period, full stop, end of story. Yeah. We've got one more time to finish the job in 2024, and that's what we're going to do. You're going to see me a lot. I don't like the rigmarole of, you know, politics, especially American politics, but, you know, there is no other alternative, Detroit, I know that. I know that. There's no alternative. Complacency and apathy for anybody next year is not going to really be a choice that none of us can afford to make. Not at this point. Yeah. We're all going to have to make a choice, yeah. Dictatorship, democracy. You know. How we choose to deal with their hatred. How we choose to deal with their violence. How we choose to repair our country. How we choose to rebuild our country. We're going to have so many choices before us, Detroit. So many. Monumental, profound choices. Who we choose to see as American. And who we choose to otherize. 
so many choices. Which one? I hope you join me in making the best of those choices. My choice is clear. Inspire Trump again in 2024. Yeah. 2020, people get it confused. 2020 was triage. We were bleeding out badly. The wound was huge. And if we didn't do triage, you know, well, right now we probably wouldn't be, you know, sharing this message. Rest assured, if he had gotten reelected, you know, we wouldn't be in a democracy already. I have yet to meet anybody that, you know, can tell me what was great about his presidency. I can tell you example after example of what was hateful, but I've never heard or experienced anything that was great about Trump's presence. Nothing. From the very inception to all the hateful anti-Semitic racist conspiracy theories, QAnon, none of it, none of it was presidential. Yeah. And it all culminated in the attack on our nation's capital. Now, if you see all those dots and connect all those dots, and then once you have all the dots connected, you can't see the picture of what it is in 2024. If you get complacent or apathy sets in, I don't know what to tell you besides, you know. You might as well have dug your own grave and the nation's grave. Because that's primarily what you're doing with complacency and apathy next year. You're digging your own grave. Period. Yeah. Look, the stand and the choice. Some of us are going to be in the grave either way. That's just a fact. But you at least have the honor as Anthony Hubert did, of standing against it. Yeah. You know what Cal Rittenhouse was. You know what that is. Detroit, they showed up with those AR-15s at the Black Lives Matter rally because they wanted to put black Americans in their place. Don't you black people make too much noise was the message they were sending with that. And you know, the warning was Anthony Hubert and Joseph Rosenbaum. Yeah, that was, in my opinion, ordered by the commander in chief. That's why he was pictured giving him the thumbs up, standing next to him. They knew exactly what that was. And I do too. Yeah. That's what we're dealing with. That's the stand and that's the choice we'll have to make again in 2024. Elections most certainly matter. And everybody's voice is going to matter. Whether you choose to not participate, that's your choice. But it's going to matter. Yeah, it's going to matter, for sure. Whatever choice you make, it's going to matter next year. Yeah, all of our choices for sure are going to matter next year. Detroit. We have 11 months to stop it. I 
think we can do it. We're going to have to get the work done. And you know, this whole thing about poles. Poles don't grow. You know, President Biden has been underestimated in every election he's always run in. Going back to when he was a senator. Americans know Biden. And Americans know Trump. That's why I say this election isn't really about those two men. They're a representation of something much larger and much deeper. That's what they're a representation. They're a representation of dictatorship and democracy. And what type of tone and tenor we want our leaders to have. What type of face we want to demonstrate to the rest of the world. We are not going to be deterred, Detroit, that's for sure. We are not going to be intimidated, that's for sure. We for sure are not going to be bullied. We for sure are not going to be terrorized. Because of Detroit, we're going to exercise our rights. Probably in the largest numbers this republic has ever seen. I believe 2024, the election, will be the largest election in American history. For record participation. Because the choice is going to be very, very clear. Crystal clear. I know you'll make good choices, Detroit. You did in 2020. And I think you will in 2024. We've just got to, you know, stand up and make the choice. We see their true colors. We really do. I most certainly do. The only color I saw was hate to what they did to Detroit. Yeah, that was hate. That was their color. That's Donald Trump's color, too. Hate. 